Last time we did some trail building on the property, we fell a tree and milled a 10 foot plank from it to make this sketchy yet solid plank jump. While building the jump itself went smoothly, the landing was a different story. I was expecting to carve a nice little downslope into the hillside, but I wasn't expecting that just under the surface I'd find a massive boulder. This meant that in order to make a safe landing, a ton of dirt needed to be brought in. At the time, the ground was still majorly frozen, so that kind of put a stop to this whole project until spring. I decided to jump it anyway, but it was pretty sketchy, so now we'll be finishing the landing before anyone tries to session this thing. Building such a large landing area creates its own problems, mainly in the fact that I need to move a ton of dirt. I'm trying to be as self-sufficient as possible and utilizing as many resources as I have available when making these trails, so what I lack in machinery usually means I have to make up in manual labor, and at this point I'm only armed with my truck and a shovel to move dirt. I could have a bunch of dirt brought in by someone commercially, and I still may do that down the road, but at this time we're operating on a budget, which means the dirt around the property can be paid in sweat equity rather than hard-earned cash. The ground by the jump is so rocky that digging on site is pretty much not an option, so I need to move some dirt across the property up to this location. I decided to frame in the side of the landing with some down logs just to see how much I needed to fill. I really didn't feel like making a ton of trips of digging and filling the truck, so I figured I would take advantage of the rocky terrain and collect a bunch close by to bury. Looking at the shape of the terrain, we have to fill a lot on the right side, so I hopped on my mower biscuit and gathered rocks for fill. And I'm so glad that I did this because it easily saved me an hour or better of shoveling dirt. Even though this helped me save some time, I still had a ton of dirt to move. So I started digging away and loading it into the truck, but I quickly realized that motivation itself wasn't enough to get the job done. You have a lot of time to think while working with the shovel, especially of ways to try and save effort. And at this point, the perfect thing came to mind. The only catch is though, it's been rotting away in a backyard for about 10 years. My parents have owned this tiller since the 80s, and while it may be old, it's a beast of a dirt mover. It's been sitting in their backyard, forgotten and covered in plastic and bark for a, a long time. It was running when parked, so I figured just cleaning out the fuel lines was all it really needed to get this thing back on its feet. It was down the hill though, and seeing that it wasn't running yet, made it pretty hard to get it to a good work area. Now that it's on flat ground, let's dig into this thing. As I suspected, the tank and fuel lines were filled with nasty old gas and water. We'll be taking this crud to the hazardous waste drop off at the dump for sure. After some greasing of the throttle linkage, breaking loose some seized pivot points, and replacing the pull start cord after I broke it twice in a row, we got this thing ripping ground again. Oh, and did I mention this thing has an effing plow? Yeah, this thing is old, and being so old, it doesn't have modern safety features built into it. In fact, I think it has bloodlust for people as much as it does topsoil. My dad told me a story about my uncle. He was using this to till a garden, he was going along the rows, and he took a, a, a turn, and right behind him was a fence. So it was tilling, the blades were spinning like before, and he took a turn, and instead of going forward, it went backwards and he panicked and started to climb up with the blades going, pushing up against the fence. <laughs> and he like was in full panic mode. My dad like hit the lever to make it go the other way, but it was gonna like climb him with the blades. That's what I thought it was gonna happen to you earlier when it tipped up and you oh, beat the tree. Right there. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Well, the blades weren't going then, but. Still though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it could do something. Let's just say I have a couple of bugs to work out on it before I use it regularly, but so far it works awesome. In a matter of like 10 minutes, I had a pile of loose soil here large enough to fill my entire truck bed. And while, yeah, it's still a lot of work to shovel all of this in and out of the truck, the tiller has cut my effort in half as far as getting the dirt up from the ground, which is a huge plus. This thing is going to be so helpful in cutting in fresh single track, shaping out berms and kickers using the plow, that I'm, I'm definitely thankful to have it. 
enough talk about moving dirt. Let's move on to improving the plank itself a little bit. Dude. No. Yeah, how is that mouthful of dirt? Come on. Go. Move. I've been wanting to shore this thing up a little bit better. So I bought some actual metal brackets and leg screws to really stabilize this thing. Last time, I grabbed some scrap metal straps to tie this thing down using wood screws. It held up for the time being, but these are going straight to the trash now. These new brackets are nice and burly, so this plank won't be going anywhere for a long time. Go get them! Go get them, Dean! Now that this thing is complete and the landing has been sitting for a couple days, it's time for a quick test. You ready for me to ruin my beautifully manicured landing? Yes. <laughs> I just want to see how soft it is still. Yeah, it is a little spongy still, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I don't know, you could try going fast down it. Going fast down it? Going, going fast. Beanie, what do you think? No? What are you doing? You're not going to jump it, are you? What? You're not jumping, are you? You mean you don't know? No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's a little bit better of a landing. Um, let's go back up. I don't know if I should, but the entrance to it is super skinny. And I've always known that, but it's pretty skinny. I don't know if I should widen it and like put planks on top of it and make it all one width or if I should just run it. Expert level jump. <laughs> it is a little little janky, but I mean, I just, I just hit it. It wasn't as bad this time because I've hit it once already. Yeah. And the landing was a lot better. This needs some more time to set up. Did you get me actually hitting it? Yeah. Okay, good. I just think I did. God, I hope you did. <laughs> the landing needs to set up a little longer, but overall this thing is finally running prime. I wanted to thank you guys for helping me name this feature too. I had you vote on some names and submit your own suggestions, which was super awesome. The winning suggested name was first submitted by Baylor Litsky with Pucker Plank. So thanks Baylor, you have a swag bag on its way. When I picked Pucker Plank as the winning submitted choice, I didn't realize that name was taken by a very prominent YouTuber already, which was a little bit of a bummer. But the total votes were overwhelmingly in favor of one particular name and for an obvious reason. Ladies and gents, you're now looking at the fully completed Jank Plank. And this is only the start of this trail, so expect some more builds and big features in the next coming weeks. It helps more than you know, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more trail builds and riding videos, click subscribe. Thanks for watching today, you guys, and as always, keep the rubber side down. <laughs> what? Pull a gym. What do I do? <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's what you do in every picture. What? <laughs> I don't. Like six or seven pictures of you and Jim doing that. I don't agree with you. Let me go on my Facebook page. <laughs> Your fur, fur, fur. Facebook.